So, um, I bought three cell site simulators. Now, uh, I didn't purchase them all at once. Uh, they kind of came and went um, over the course of a couple months. I guess actually none of them went, but they all came. This is sort of an update video. So basically, this is supposed to be kind of a where I've been, what I've been up to, and why it's been a year and a half since I posted a video. So essentially, uh, this started out with an idea I had way back uh, around the time I released my previous video, where I went on eBay and I found an Enritsu MD8470A cell site simulator. Essentially, it's a fake cell phone tower in a box. It's a cellular base station. And I found it for under $200 on eBay. Um, looked up the specs. I found that you can simulate 2G networks, 3G networks. And um, I had the idea of just recently in my area, at least in the US here, um, 3G network coverage was actually discontinued. Portions of the band have been sold off to other projects. Essentially, you can't really use a 3G phone on 3G cell towers anymore. You know, there's some, you know, uh, legacy bands and uh, fallback and whatever emergency devices, stuff like that. Um, but for the most part, 3G devices just shouldn't function on a normal SIM card anymore. And so I had the idea, it would be cool to make the last 3G phone call. And so what I mean by that is basically taking a, you know, an older phone like this and hooking it up to a fake cellular base station and making calls on it. Um, now I should say, this was another one of my mistakes. Uh, these old Nokias only do 2G. Um, so again, this was, you know, purchasing additional phones, waiting, you know, weeks and weeks for them to show up. You can see here, this one's labeled two. Yes, that means I have uh, more than one. Um, and yeah, you know, basically it was a whole learning process, but it's been a really fun video to work on. Now where the issue comes in is the fact that I have three cell site simulators. So the first one is an MD8470A. Um, I recorded a whole segment of video with this thing. Um, I had a blast with it. Uh, it runs 2G perfectly, simulated a 2G network, hooked up some 2G phones, called back and forth, sent texts, you know, the whole nine yards, really fun video. Um, now I went to go turn on the 3G portion and I realized, oh fuck, this thing doesn't do 3G. It turns out the one I bought just straight up doesn't have 3G transceivers in it. And I somehow completely overlooked that when checking out the specs of the device. So that was a bummer. Um, I then found on eBay another MD8470A with uh, 3G radios in it. And so my thought was sweet. Now I finally have 3G radios. I can buy this one, you know, get it here. Um, another couple weeks of waiting, couple weeks of saving up money, all that kind of stuff. Um, again, it was under 200 bucks, which is just crazy for how cheap these things are. Um, finally shows up, I go to hook it up and uh, it seems like it might be property of Qualcomm. Um, it has a bunch of proprietary configurations on it. And uh, when you boot it up, it tries to connect to like a master host to be, you know, remotely controlled. It was definitely part of some probably rack mount setup for doing cellular testing. And essentially uh, the standard test suite software, which I was using for the video on the first unit, just doesn't run on this new unit. Um, if you get, download the simulation software, the like, you know, actual kind of like prescribed simulation software works. So you can make a, you know, automatic routine of do X, Y, Z, these five steps and the phone will carry them out. Um, but the actual nice visual simulation of here's our simulated base station. Let's make a call on it. Let's send a text on it. For some reason, that portion of the functionality doesn't work. I still have no idea what's up with that. I think it's missing some of the software licensing for some of the more basic simulation steps. Um, it was kitted out kind of custom as every single one of these things is. And so unfortunately, that cell site simulator also ended up being a bust. And so I was sitting there just racking my head. I was like, at this point, it's been, you know, almost a year. This was a few months ago. And I was like, what do I do now? Like at this point, I'm sick of not being able to run this 3G simulation. Do I just change the video? Do I make it about 2G? Do I, you know, find the software somewhere online? Do I find someone selling a CD of it? You know, what can I do? Um, and then, uh, lo and behold, a new cell site simulator, which the camera is currently sitting on top of, uh, popped up on eBay. Um, this is the Enritsu MD8475A, so it's slightly newer, slightly better specs. Um, this unit can actually do uh, 4G as well, um, well, if you have the cards for it and the software and everything else, because of course it's extremely proprietary. But it's a much better spec unit, much newer, runs Windows 7 instead of Windows XP like the other two. This one, funny enough, is also old X property of Qualcomm, covered in property of Qualcomm stickers. You know, you can see property of Qualcomm, do not remove, IT provision from Qualcomm. It's allowed on their domain though, which is quite interesting. Um, and then you can see back in 2022, it switched over to being reference use only, not used for actual acceptance, testing, or data collection purposes. Um, I'm guessing when maybe devices reach a certain age and they retire them, they switch over to that and then sit on a shelf for a few years before they're eventually, you know, offloaded to some wholesaler to go put on eBay. Um, who knows? Uh, but all sorts of interesting little stickers and things on this thing. But this one turns on, works, seems like we're going to be able to use it for the 3G simulation. Um, but then I was looking at YouTube the other day and I realized 
it has been almost a year and a half since I uploaded a video. And I was just thinking to myself, how long is it going to take me to record the simulation? Hopefully everything works, edit down the video, you know, basically go through the whole nine yards. Uh, and, and how many more delays am I going to have? And so I realized I was like, why don't I just provide an update video? You know, I can show off the cell site simulators, give a little bit of background on what I've been working on and talk about the trials and tribulations of running 3G cellular networks from your house. Um, but yeah, so I thought I'd give a little overview. This is cell site simulator number one. Everybody say hi, cell site simulator number one. I'm a little worried I'm gonna break this chair. This cell site simulator was the first one I purchased. This is the MD8470A using only 2G functionality. Um, you can see we've got a PCMCIA slot here on the front. Um, basically, it's, it's a, I mean, it's a well-spec unit. It works perfect for hooking up 2G phones. And oh boy, howdy, did I buy some 2G phones. To assist in the 2G testing, I decided it would be fun to buy a whole collection of Nokia 3310s um, and other, you know, same generation Nokias. So we have, you know, this translucent flame Nokia, We've got, you know, the classic early 2000s brick Nokias. Um, a lot of these work. Um, buying new Nokia batteries is a little sketchy. They all feel like fire hazards. Um, this one was crazy. It's like a, got an oil slick case on it. This one does not work at all. Um, I think the screen's broken. Um, you know, you can see here this handset says from Southwestern Bell. So, you know, came from somebody, somebody down south. Um, what else do we got? We got some silver Nokias. We got some gross Nokias. We got some nice Nokias. Actually, they're all kind of gross. I'm not going to lie. Um, got some gray Nokias, got some white Nokias with a mm, turning beige, you know, gross back. All the rubbers disintegrated. They all feel like crap. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's the classic 2G phone experience. But that being said, they also hook up to the 2G base station and I actually got cell phone calls to work on them. But, uh, anyway, so the issue then was we need 3G functionality, you know, the, the, you know, 2G calls, texts, SMS, that's all nice. But the whole point of 3G was, you know, internet access and, you know, all this new 3G functionality and these new bands and everything else. And I realized I can't just use 2G phones to show off 3G functionality. So I had to source some 3G phones. Um, these are crappy, you know, AT&T branded whatever phones. These are ZTE model Z432s. Um, FCC ID SRQ dash Z432 for those of you playing along at home. And essentially these are just, uh, you know, crappy little AT&T 3G phones. They do all the 3G stuff. They play games. They can, you know, access the internet, all that kind of stuff. Um, but most importantly, they're cheap and they're unlocked. So they can be used on my little test SIM carrier. And, uh, and yeah, or they theoretically could, if we could hook them up to a 3G simulation, they hooked up great to the 2G simulation, but you know, like what's the fun in doing 2G only. And that's where our next, uh, cell site simulator comes in. Let me go grab that one. Um, so this is cell site simulator number two. I don't know what you can really see. Um, it's the exact same as the previous one, basically. Um, you'd be forgiven for thinking that I just showed you the same unit twice because the front panel is exactly the same. The model number is exactly the same. Basically, the way specking these things out works is you choose various options to have pre-installed on the device. So there'll be a list of stickers on the back of the device, and that defines every single software option that was chosen for the current device, every single hardware option, you know, radio transceiver card, all of those kind of options are all laid out on these stickers on the back. And so when you're buying one of these, just buying one based on the model number doesn't do anything. You have to buy it based on what the stickers on the back actually show, because that's actually what hardware is in the unit. So let me see if I can just spin this one around. I don't know how well that even came through, but basically uh, this one has four stickers on the back. The previous one had two stickers on the back. The reason for that being this one has not only the two 2G uh, RF cards, but two 3G RF cards. So this is the one that was allegedly supposed to do 3G. Um, that didn't pan out, obviously. <laughs> Simulation issues, weird software issues. It's all proprietary as hell. And if you message and read to and you say, hey, give me support. I'm an you know independent contractor. I'm a private owner of one of these. They either A, just won't respond at all, or B, if you do get a response, it'll be something along the lines of, you know, buy a multi-thousand dollar service contract. So, I don't know. I guess not to not to down talk Enritsu. These products are amazing. They're, they make really cool stuff. It's just that they don't really give you the time of day if you're a, you know, single private individual. I don't know if they're really looking for your business. Now then, with the two boring units out of the way, what about the unit that actually does 3G? The Windows 7, you know, all that kind of stuff. Ah, uh, the camera's sitting on it. Let me spin it around. Here it is. This is the Anritsu MD8475A. You can see here the uh, Qualcomm stickers I was talking about, all sorts of various, you know, IT provisioning stickers and whatnot. Um, and this is the unit. 
Hello, YouTube. This is the actual unit that will do um, 3G. It is quite a bit larger than the uh, previous 2G units that I was messing with. You can see both of those down here. Um, and basically what you do is you just attach your cell phone up to these RF ports on the front. You know, you can plug away at the keypad to enter phone numbers, call people, do whatever. And all the software is controlled right through a Windows 7 interface. Um, I plugged the keyboard into it because I think doing everything with the built-in keypad is a pain in the butt. But uh, yeah, honestly, it works great. Now, my last step is I need to actually figure out how to get the 3G simulation up and running, write the SIM cards, and basically pump out the video. I mean, I got to finish editing it. I'm so slow at that. But yeah, so that is uh, the story of how I came into the possession of three cell site simulators. Um, I, I honestly don't know what to do with them at this point because I've done 2G calling with them. I've tested out, you know, various 2G phones. Um, so these two units are kind of just sitting here. This one will be cool for messing with 3G stuff, you know, now and in the future. But, um, but yeah, if there's anything you're curious about on these units, anything you'd like to see me uh, make a video about, or if you just want a little walk through the software, I'd be more than happy to oblige. If you want to see any specific phones connected up to them, I'll do what I can. Um, I've got some Japanese Keitai cell phones up here. I've got, you know, these random AT&T 3G phones. Um, I have all sorts of toys, many, many things. Um, you know, that whole big box of phones we discussed previously. Um, but as always, if there's anything you want to see, let me know. Um, you know, I, I enjoy playing with this kind of stuff, so I don't know what's interesting to YouTube, what to film, what not to film. So, you know, hey, as is the status with every medium, um, I just am going to put everything out there. So, but yeah, so if there's anything you want to see, just let me know. Um, and then anyways, as always, my name is Tim and this has been Every Medium. Thank you for watching.